Hello, I'm Pat Greaves. My father was Chris Daniels. His uh, real name was Alec Greaves, but Chris Daniels was his uh, on-air name, his stage name, on WKY TV, uh, basically from 1952 until 1983. Uh, Dad was hired uh, right out of uh, college. He had just finished his master's degree at OU and was, was looking for a career in uh, television or radio. Dad was blessed with a great voice. He actually uh, sang at weddings and did, did some commercial voiceovers. His actual first uh, uh, radio or broadcasting job was KNOR Radio in Norman. Uh, he, in the 50s, or, or I'm sorry, in the late 40s, he had, he'd uh, actually helped with some of the OU uh, football radio broadcasts. <clears throat> and then later on, he actually did the color for OU, which I'll get into uh, later. Anyway, Dad's name, uh, Chris Daniels, came about. My older brother, oldest brother, uh, is Dan, Daniel, and my next older brother is Chris. So that he just took the name Chris Daniels, uh, which made sense, and then I came along later, and, and then a younger brother, Kurt, also. Uh, but, that, but again, people know, have knew my dad his whole life pretty much as Chris Daniels. His voice was basically discovered, and when he auditioned uh, to be a staff announcer at WKY uh, in, in the, right before he was hired in 52, they said, you've got the voice, uh, you know, you're hired. And of course, I'm, I'm sure Dad was thrilled. He he worked alongside some real uh, great, you know, announcing pioneers: Bill Fountain, Wakefield Holly, uh, Gene Delahaye, Maury Ferguson, Wilson Hurst. I'm sure I'm leaving out a few, uh, but but Dad was one of the again one of the original on-air pioneers. Uh, later on in his in his career, uh, actually, in probably in the early '60s, he was the the guy every night on Channel Four that said, "It's 10 o'clock. Do you know where your children are?" And uh, many people to this day still remember that phrase. In fact, it was actually nominated for an Emmy. Uh, Dad, being uh, one of the staff announcers, it, it really was a very interesting concept. From the earliest time that I remember, which is probably about three years old, maybe four, so that would have been, been about 56 or 57, Dad would, along with the other uh, staff announcers, would go in the live announcer's booth, which was above the, uh, the studio, uh, there by the control room, and they would literally do and say all of the uh, station IDs. Uh, basically from sign on to sign off and if I remember sign on was about 6 or 7 a.m. and sign off was was always midnight uh, and of course they were televising broadcasting and more uh, color programming that that came along slowly through the 50s and, and you know and increased from the original of course black and white programming but again when I was about three years old the first time I remember being in that live and answers booth Dad would, would grab my arm, literally, and he would you know, say, now don't make a sound. When that on-air light comes on, we are live on the air. And, and boy, I remember that. That was burned in my brain, you know, like a, like a branding iron. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Dad would say, uh, this is WKY-TV, Channel 4 in Oklahoma City, reminding you to fasten your seatbelt, or reminding you to, you know, don't don't be a litter bug, whatever, all the old phrases from the 50s and 60s that we all remember. It really was a different time though. Uh, Dad's first um, on-air program, actually, and of course he did live commercials and, and obviously read live live announcers, uh, announcements and, and uh, scripts, but he was uh, chosen to do the Deputy Chris uh, TV show in 19, I believe it was about 1954. Uh, that lasted about three years. It was prior to the uh, Foreman Scotty show. So dad would come on in the afternoon and of course again everything was live uh, and, and he would and he would be the uh, basically the host for the uh, Hopalong Cassidy and later on I think the uh, Gene Autry, uh, Gene Autry singing cowboy um, TV show. So he would be the uh, he would be he would host them, but he would also do like a little uh, skit 
and uh, as you're seeing on the screen now, there's some pictures of Dad with his Winchester rifle and the, the tough look, you know, he's going to get the bandit, so it was kind of in between the, uh, the program. And uh, I barely remember that. Of course, my two older brothers uh, would, would have a, a clearer memory of that. Uh, then in 1957, as I said, that uh, Deputy Chris show was, uh, was not on the air anymore. Foreman Scotty started, and uh, Dad, of course, was well established by then, obviously. Uh, and, and he would pe play kind of recurring roles, bit parts, so to speak in the Foreman Scotty show, and I remember he was an English uh, tax collector. I can't remember his name, but then it, one character I do remember of Dad's was Mr. Wing. And Mr. Wing was a Chinese laundryman who would come and deliver uh, laundry to the, to the Circle Four Ranch. Now, that's, I know that's a stretch, but that was the character. And I remember vividly uh, going down to the Colonial Costume Shop which is on about Northwest uh, 6th and Classen, just, just uh, west of downtown. And he asked me to help him pick out uh, his uh, costume for that Mr. Wing character. Uh, and again, I remember it like it was yesterday. So I helped Dad pick out the little, uh, you know, coolie satin shirt or, you know, the long Chinese uh, garment, whatever it's called, and the little hat. <laughs> and uh, Dad grew up and, and came on the scene uh, during the time that uh, diction and pronunciation was extremely important. It, not that it's not now, but not, not nearly as much. He was actually an English and speech uh, double major. In fact, he got a, he got a master's in, uh, in uh, English. Uh, so he actually was studying his craft or honing his craft uh, you know, prior to him being hired. Uh, and, and it served him well in life. But, you know, some, he would walk up to uh, a friend of mine or a neighbor and start talking and that you just immediately knew and he wasn't he wasn't phony about it dad had a very natural voice and uh, you know many of you hopefully that, that will remember his voice it was it was very distinctive as was uh, the, the other staff announcers the Wakefield Hollies Bill Fountains etc and uh, again that was very important one of the things that I remember and, and has been called to my attention he would not say WKY, he would say WKY, Channel 4, Oklahoma City. Uh, it, the, the W was very important in, in how that was pronounced. It was kind of, again, a pet peeve of his for people to mispronounce it. Uh, Dad actually doubled uh, being on the air on WKY radio as well as WKY TV. A lot of memories there, too. From the time I was about five years old, uh, I would look forward so much when, when I, I guess I was old enough, Dad would actually you know, take me in on like Friday nights. It was almost always a Friday night. He would seem like he had uh, uh, fairly frequent, either Friday night or, or Saturday night uh, <clears throat> booth announcer assignments. And I would look forward to that so much. So I'd come home from school and then at four o'clock, we'd go out to the station and it, it was really neat. I would get to hang out uh, there in, in uh, in the control room and, and you know walk around and see a lot of the live uh, shows being being done and uh, you know talk to the cameraman I mean every, everybody was really engaging it's 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 not the same now you can't just walk into it you know your employees kids just can't walk into a TV station or a control room now like they used to do but uh, then I would go upstairs and uh, especially in the early 60s maybe mid 60s uh, I would uh, sit in the uh, announcers, or, I mean in the uh, control room upstairs where radio was and you know would, would listen to like Ronnie Kay and I'd, I'd hear people like Bo Nance and uh, Jim, you know Ross Porter, uh, Jim Palmer, some of those guys, some of the pioneers and, and actually I remember uh, former congressman uh, Ernest Iztuk who went by Jim Iztuk on the air. I would, I would listen to them do their news and the old AP uh, wire machine, which of course they had downstairs in the newsroom on TV, but also upstairs in radio. I remember the, you know, the clack, 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 clack of the, the wire, the old wire machine tapping out the news, and boy, that, that would fascinate me watching it uh, type, type out the print. And of course, remember, this is the 60s. This is way before even fax machines, and certainly way before computers or cell phones or you know, any, any of the instantaneous uh, uh, electronic 
ways of transmitting things that we have now. So uh, again, really, really was a different time. Dad was also called out quite a few times to be, uh, to do live, live shows along with Foreman Scotty and of course Danny Williams, you know, 3D Danny. Uh, they would go, I mean, many times we'd ride the little uh, train from the station out to Frontier City. That's about a two, two and a half mile drive. Of course, the, uh, the little Frontier City or Channel 4, whatever it was, train would, would pull the kids and that, that was a lot of fun. And there would be all kinds of, you know, live uh, stand-up, you know, promotions that, that, that they would do for various sponsors. Um, and, and again, it, things that, that they really don't do now very much. Dad, again, I'd mentioned about him being on the, uh, Deputy Chris from uh, approximately 53 to 57. Then that show was off the air for about five years when Foreman Scotty uh, show was really in its, uh, in, in its infancy, but also, of course, gained a real foothold. Then in 1962, uh, a lot of you will probably remember, he was uh, Scoop O'Brien. Uh, he was the, uh, basically the newspaper reporter. They would uh, introduce the Superman adventure for the day, and then after all the Superman uh, uh, series had run out, which took approximately a year, uh, th then he did the Lone Ranger, and he, of course, announced that. And uh, again, I remember uh, we would go upstairs in what they called the observation deck or observation tower, he would load the film up for that day's episode, uh, you know, and, and then play it through and kind of write himself or type himself out a script uh, that he would go, go by. But remember, they didn't have teleprompters then, so everything was <clears throat> pretty much memorized. And that was the old days in television. You, you memorized your script, you memorized uh, your, uh, uh, you know, your, your live programming. Of course, now if it was a news, news program or, or a commercial, you obviously had a script. But you would, you know, look down. So, you know, if you go back in the old days of television, uh, both the national and, and the local programs, you'll see the uh, uh, the talent uh, looking down and then back up. Of course, now that would that would be very strange looking because, of course, teleprompters you're, you're looking into the camera the whole time. As uh, technology improved and, and of course, uh, increased there into the uh, early 70s, basically. Uh, Dad's staff announcer, uh, live booth announcer position, along with the other uh, great voices, were pretty much eliminated at that point because videotape came in and of course then everything could be pre-recorded. Uh, and so w with that transition, uh, Dad actually was, uh, was approached by uh, station management and I am confident that it was Norman Bagwell uh, that was the station manager uh, at the time approached dad about being public uh, service director which is sort of a community affairs position and he was a natural for that. Dad was so gregarious and such a people person that literally never met a stranger and of course he fit in so perfectly with the WKY family. It truly was a family and anyone that, that ever worked there, uh, especially in that you know, golden age in the 50s, 60s, 70s, can tell you that was the case. Uh, everyone you know, got along, uh, they, they did things socially together. I remember uh, vividly uh, some weekend uh, parties that uh, he, a lot of times he would leave my brothers and I at, at my grandparents' house, but sometimes uh, mom and dad would take us along uh, you know, to these weekend parties at, at various people's houses, and many of them were WKY employees. Uh, so, you know, we, we went on picnics together. Uh, we had, like I said, these weekend parties. Our, our kids, uh, if we didn't go to school together and, you know, played baseball and so forth, uh, we knew each other and we, and we did things socially. So it really was a special time. Um, and uh, Dad, of course, uh, segued and moved right along, blended in with the, with the new technology. And uh, although although he was still, you know, very much a, a kind of a pencil and paper guy, uh, his uh, uh, smooth announcing style and, and his again his people pleasing, you know, gregariousness really did serve him well in his whole life. Uh, as, as we go into the 70s and 80s, the, the community. Uh, service or, or actually the public service director uh, post that he that he filled at that time 
really it was required by Channel 4 and by the uh, FCC to uh, justify each uh, broadcast uh, station's license. So uh, Dad was, uh, in, in essence, kind of responsible for keeping Channel 4 on the air. Uh, so needless to say, that was an, an important position. And he still uh, did a lot of uh, uh, announcing and scripts, and uh, he was the voice for uh, uh, many uh, uh, businesses uh, through the years, some car dealerships. I remember the old uh, uh, Burl Holmes Ford. He did uh, Billy Lee Pies. Uh, I'm, I'm, of course, talking about businesses that are, haven't been around for forever. I think he did some Emmer Brothers, uh, you know, all, all kinds of, of uh, sponsorships. So, so he still was, was active in, in both the radio and the television. So Dad uh, re, uh, had the public affairs, the, the uh, public service uh, position uh, from about 1971 until his retirement in 1983. Uh, and of course, Dad again loved the loved the uh, positions that he had. He loved the announcing. He loved being in the public eye. But Dad really was a, a humble guy. Uh, although again, he loved being on camera and loved being in the public eye. He was he was very uh, he, he never was arrogant. Dad truly had the Will Rogers mentality. He never met a man he didn't like, uh, and, and he certainly never met a stranger. He would engage. Uh, total strangers of all socioeconomic you know, levels in conversation because again that's just what dad did. He, he loved being around people and, and talking about everything. Uh, and, and as dad did retire uh, in 1983, uh, he kind of continued on his own uh, to, to be in front of people and, and serve people. Uh, he had numerous visits, in fact I think in, in his uh, probably last 10 years he visited uh, especially uh, former uh, you know, Channel 4 employees or even some of the other stations, that, uh, people that he knew it, you know, that were shut in, like in nursing homes or whatever. He would visit them on a regular basis. Never, ever asked for a penny of compensation. He just did it on his own. He, he, again, he loved to do that and he loved to serve people. And, and, he, and again, being in the public eye, I remember a, a story back in about, oh, I would have been about third or fourth grade. So this would have been about 19, probably 62, maybe 63. And he was on the air with his Scoop O'Brien um, Superman uh, show. He walked into my grade school, Putnam Heights Elementary. Uh, we lived right off of 34th Street by the school. And he would walk in and of course everybody, you know, kind of went nuts. It's like, oh wow, look who's here. You know, it's a celebrity. Uh, there's there's Chris Daniels, or there, the kids probably, you know, call him Scoop O'Brien. Uh, but, and, and Dad loved that, that people recognized him, but again, he was so down to earth. I mean, that that's the, the word that you could describe Dad. He was just, he was just a regular person, but he, he, he really wore both hats well. And, and as he did retire in later years, all the, uh, the personal time that he spent with people and, and, and of course with his family was the, was the most that he spent. Uh, he never missed any of my kids' uh, baseball or basketball or football games. Uh, he must have gone to 150 of them. <laughs> Everyone that I was there, uh, Dad was there, and, and, and he loved being with his family. One thing I forgot to mention, I actually worked at WKY Radio just as, as Dad did. I worked there from uh, 1978 to 1980. Uh, so that, uh, that was pretty ironic in the, in the whole scheme of things. And uh, kind of a fitting uh, tribute to Dad in, in a way, in, in a fitting way to close, I guess, his, his career, and, and as it turned out, his life, uh, was in December, uh, right around Christmas time. A good friend of mine, uh, Mike Rogers, uh, who is the uh, Road King Rogers on uh, KTOK Radio, some of you may know him, uh, arranged, he had a gr great interest in, in the, uh, television and the old, old broadcasting and so forth, and got to know my dad and arranged a studio tour there with Channel 4. Uh, so that, that I, I thought, was, you know, dad was right back in his old stomping grounds and his old you know, home, home turf, and I thought that was a, a really neat and fitting way uh, uh, for Dad to kind of sail off into the sunset.